I think my advice would be um, to my to myself: don't don't fear the opinions of others. In the sense of everybody's opinion, you know, I, as I've got older, I'm, I'm I'm not that old, but you know, <laughs> I, I, as I've as I've matured, if you like, uh, beyond being in my twenties and, and and whatnot, um, I've realised that you've got to be careful who you allow to speak into your life, and critique and and direction and, and being mentored and, and helped along by certain people is great, but you've got to be careful you don't allow everybody yeah. to have that same impact because not everybody's intentions are the best for you. Um, so don't allow the perceived opinions of others to to stop you doing something that you're passionate about. I think that's a good it, one. I just think if, if you're going to do something great and you want to do something amazing, you're going to get criticized for it from somebody, particularly in today's world of social media. There's always someone out there who's going to have a negative word. But the fact is, if you don't have a go, you'll never know. And if you're young, have a go. You're young enough to recover. That so was the give big something thing a go. For me, it was that when... Um... I was, I was getting advice from different people and I was tempted to go and work for myself towards it, take another job. And it was just, they said, well, actually, look, if it doesn't work out, you can always get another job. You are employable. And for me, it was almost where I I wanted to just give it my best. And then if it doesn't work out and I've done everything that I tried to do, you know, kind of fair enough. The last thing which I'm happy to kind of finish on uh, before I ask you if there's anything you want to kind of plug is almost to do with you have had um, a lot of kind of mentors over the years where you know a lot of very uh, wise people. And it was almost, I wanted to ask, what is the best kind of piece of advice you've ever had? And I don't mind if it's more than one, but it's the kind of thing yeah. for you personally, um, you know, what's the yeah, best piece of advice? Uh, okay, I'll, so I'll give you the what I think has been one of the best pieces of advice I've got, but then also one of the, one of the common themes that I've picked up in, in some of the people I've met. And um, a lot of it came down to the fact that because I, I lost my dad at quite a young age, I didn't have that father figure. So I had to go find those golden nuggets and wisdom in other people. And so that helped me actually get over those insecurities of, Oh, I wonder what that person thinks. So I just started reaching out to people and, um, the, the one great bit of advice that always sticks with me is, is a guy called Bill Scott, T-Sider, who, who you know. And Bill had a, a phrase written behind his desk. I don't know if you remember it. I do. But I went into his office one day and said, Bill, like, because uh, I worked there for a short time, and I said, what, why have you got that? And this phrase basically said, um, walk straight, trust a few, always paddle your own canoe. And I'd never heard it before. I'd never heard it in that context. And and Bill just said, you know, it's a mantra that he carries around with him. Firstly, walk straight, you know, have integrity, have good values, just be a decent person and, and treat others how you want to be treated yourself. Um, trust a few. Again, coming back to be careful who you're allowed to speak into your life. Um, not everybody's got the right intentions for you. And then the always paddle your own canoe was really interesting because um, Bill had explained how at one point in the in his business's journey, he got private equity and effectively handed over a large part of his business um, to a bank, uh, uh, some investors in London, and realized during that process just how damaging it was for mm -hmm. him to allow others to paddle his canoe. And when he got the chance to, to get it back, he did. And, and that's always stuck with me. And uh, just seeing that above his office, I, I think about that quite a lot when I'm thinking about business decisions. Uh, and, and if I can just touch on the second thing that I've picked up from people, um, I've found in, in people that are successful, and, and I read a book called Three Feet from Gold, which talks, it was about interviewing very successful people. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to start writing to people that in my world are successes and where I want to be. And I reached out to um, a guy called uh, Bob Keeler, mm -hmm. who was CEO of, of Wood Group at the time. Uh, and I reached out to a, a few other people and I found that despite the fact that some of these people ran multi-billion dollar companies with tens of thousands of staff, um, I would get responses direct from them within less than a day. And they were open to having a chat with me. Didn't know who I was, but the fact that I'd reached out asking for help yeah. um, and, and some advice resonated with them. And I thought so, that's amazing that some of the, some of the most successful people I, I knew at that time in my career were willing to reach down and help me up onto the next level. And and since then, there have been people I've met who have not even 
got close to that who've said they've not got time yeah. or they're too busy. True. And I just think, nah, you know, you, the people you meet on the way up are the same people you'll meet on the way back down. So, you know, have time to help the next generation um, because it's, it's rewarding as well. And so that's always stuck with me that, that the best leaders I've met are people who have always got time to help you no matter, you know, who you are.